Welcome to A Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May June 2024, paper 1. And in today's lesson, we will only focus on tricky and challenging questions. So watch video carefully and try to improve your understanding of physics. In order to get maximum benefit from this video, it is very important if you can pause the video, do question by yourself and then compare your answer with my answer and also you can go through solution. Also on my channel, I have uploaded a lot of videos about paper one. As your paper one exam is coming, so you can go through those videos and I'm quite confident you will get very good marks if you go through those videos because I have explained questions in those videos in detail. So you can look for AS and A2 paper solutions and in that playlist you will find paper one solutions at the bottom of that playlist and there are many papers. Question 6 is a thermometer can be read to an accuracy of plus minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. This thermometer is used to measure a temperature rise means temperature rise means that delta T from 40 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. What is the percentage uncertainty in the measurement of the temperature rise? This question we can answer using two different methods. So I will explain you first of all with the help of half range method. So half range method. So we will use half range method first of all. For half range method, so in this case we have 40 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So we can find out first of all what is the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by 2. So this is called half range. So we can rewrite this one. So this is the half range. So we can find a half range. So we will have maximum value minus minimum divided by 2. So let me rewrite here maximum minus minimum divided by 2. So how we can find the maximum value? So we have 40 degrees Celsius. What is the maximum value of this one? That will be 40.5 and minimum value will be 39.5 because we have 40 plus minus 0.5. And for 100 degrees Celsius, we can also write on 100 plus minus 0.5. So it means the maximum value here, it can be maximum value can be 100.5. And minimum, if you want to write on, that can be 99.5. So what is maximum value here? That delta T maximum. Delta T means temperature rise maximum. So what is temperature rise maximum? You can have to take this maximum value. So we can say this is 100 minus 5 minus you have to take the smallest one. So you can find the maximum temperature rise. So if we solve this one, uh, we will get this is equal to 61 degrees Celsius. We can also find out delta T minimum. For minimum, we have to use this minimum value, larger minimum value minus this maximum value. So we have this is 40.5. So in this case, we will get 59 degrees Celsius. So now simply we can plug in here. Maximum is 61. Minimum is 59. This is divided by 2. So in this case, we will get 2 divided by 2. So this is our half range. So now we can calculate percentage uncertainty in delta T. So what is value of delta T from here? So delta T, you can see this is 100 minus 40. I mean, this is equal to 60 degrees Celsius. So percentage uncertainty in delta T is equal to the half range half range divided by the mean value if you have more than one ratings in this case we have just one so we will write down here value means the one value you have if you have more than one values you will be using here mean value so half range we have that is equal to one and the value we have that is 60 and we need to multiply by 100 very important percentage uncertainty so you have to multiply by 100 so here we have to multiply by 100 as well so if we solve this one you get about 1.6 percent little more than that so it means answer for this question is 
empty so this is how you can approach very nice method you can use this one for any uncertainties percentage uncertainty when you need to calculate i hope this makes sense to you now let me explain you a different method that method is also very useful one so let me explain you another method so i will simply clear actually this one so i can simply clear so we can go to the second method so in this case we have t1 that is 40 plus minus 0.5 degrees celsius and we have t2 that is equal to 100 plus minus 0.5 degrees celsius so in this case what is the absolute uncertainty of delta t delta t so here we have this value this is absolute uncertainty of t1 this is delta t1 and this is also absolute answer this is uncertainty absolute uncertainty of t2 so this is delta t2 and when quantities are subtracted subtracted are added are added absolute uncertainties are added this point you need to understand absolute uncertainties are added so we can say absolute uncertainties are added so this is the point you need to understand how to deal with uncertainties absolute uncertainties when quantities are subtracted are added so in this case these quantities are subtracted means delta t in here we can say delta t here will be equal to 100 minus 40 degrees celsius so it means this is equal to 60 because because quantities here are subtracted so absolute uncertainties we need to add so it means this will be delta t1 and this will be delta t2 so here we have 0.5 plus we have 0.5 so we will get 1 degree celsius again same method you can use to calculate percentage uncertainty so we can say percentage uncertainty in delta t will be equal to 1 divided by 60 and multiply by 100 so again you will get 1.6 percent so it means d is the right answer so you can use these two methods the first method is very handy and powerful half range method you can use to calculate absolute uncertainty when quantities are added when quantities are subtracted when quantities are multiplied you can always use half range method I hope this makes sense to you and if you are looking for more resources or if you are looking for more videos for P1 so please check section section on channel for AS and A2 past papers AS and A2 past papers solution if you check this solution you will find a playlist for paper 1 and in that playlist you will see a lot of solutions for paper 1 section es and a2 past papers solution you can check this section on this channel and if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments not only from this video from any past paper i will try to answer as soon as possible question 9 says a golf club hits a golf ball the graph shows how the force f on the ball varies with time t which graph shows how the velocity v of the ball varies with time t so here we have force against time graph so this is average result resultant force so we can say this is representing average resultant force on the ball so this is the first thing we need to understand this is representing average resultant force and average resultant force simply we can say f this is equal to m a or we can simply say this is equal to m times delta v over delta t so if you look at this graph we have v against time graph so it simply means that we can say f this is equal to m and delta v by delta t this is the gradient of vt graph so we can simply say this one is the gradient of vt graph gradient so how gradient is changing so this is we need to figure out so if you look at the force for example here we have force so we can see the force is positive and force is increasing force is positive so we can say here force is positive 
until this part so force is positive and force is increasing so what does it mean it means that gradient also because m is constant so gradient should be positive and gradient should be increasing so we can also say here gradient should be positive and gradient should be increasing in the second part so this one we can say this is part one and this is second part in the second part we can say gradient uh, in second part we can say force is still positive force is positive so we can say in the second part force is positive and force is decreasing so it means that second part gradient should be positive and gradient should be decreasing so now simply we need to look at the gradient of the graphs now if you get uh, this graph here so this is gradient is decreasing so we can also draw the line here so the gradient of this one is decreasing it means this is not possible this gradient is constant it is not possible and this gradient is constant it is not possible it is not possible so this is possible graph so if you get this one first you can see gradient is positive and gradient is increasing it means it satisfied this condition so this part is correct second part the gradient is decreasing and gradient is still positive so it also satisfies this second condition so then so far this one has to be b so this is how you can answer this type of questions so in this case simply you can also say force is directly proportional to gradient so this is this is the concept i hope this makes sense Question 20 says a steel ball is falling at constant speed in oil. Which graph shows the variation with time of the gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy of the ball? It is given to us that speed is constant. So if V is constant, it means that kinetic energy is also constant. So we can say kinetic energy is also constant constant so this is first thing we can notice from here kinetic energy should be constant so it means this graph is not possible because this is telling us kinetic energy is increasing and this graph can be possible and this is also not possible but because this is telling us kinetic energy is increasing with time so answer is a our answer is b now let's try to figure out is the answer a or is the answer b now we need also need to understand speed is constant so if the speed is constant it means that in any given interval of time it will cover same distance so it will cover same distance if the speed is constant let's say this time t this is equal to one second it covered this distance then in next one second again if interval is one second it will cover the same distance because speed is constant so we can simply say t1 delta t1 this time interval this is second time interval if time intervals they are the same so distance travel also will be the same so we need to understand how potential energy in this case is changing gpe change in gp this will be equal to mg delta h so how delta h is changing so we can say delta h is v times t speed is constant so delta h is equal to v times t means distance is equal to v times t but in this case as the ball is falling so it means delta gpe is negative because the ball is falling so the potential energy is decreasing it means change is negative that's all what you need to understand now if you look at the this graph actually so you can see from here we have energy here and we have time here so what is energy over time so energy over time so you can see energy over time that is the power energy over time and in this case we are talking about potential energy so it means that is the change in potential energy over time so we can write down here this is mg times v times t divided by time divided by time so this is also representing this is also representing the gradient of the graph this is representing gradient so now we can say from here for example gradient in this case t t cancel is minus m g v so gradient in this case you can see is negative 
and gradient is constant so we can say gradient here is negative so we can say it is negative and gradient is constant why this is constant because m is constant g is constant v is constant so gradient should be negative and it should be constant so that's reason this satisfy this condition so the answer for this one has to be b so it simply means that rate of decrease of potential energy is constant so it means gradient is constant and rate and potential energy is decreasing so it is rate of decrease of potential energy so it has to be negative because change in potential energy is negative so that's reason gradient has to be negative and it has to be constant because mgv they are constant i hope this make very clear sense to you and if these videos are helping you please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very very important and also leave some comments if these videos help you to improve your conceptual understanding of physics and if you're looking for extra resources please join patreon on patreon you will see a lot of resources and link for patreon you can see in the description of this video Oh,